Today we are talking about something called H. pylori. This is something that you guys have asked me to talk about. So many of you have asked me on TikTok, on Instagram. And so I decided it was time to finally jump in. H. pylori is a bacteria that affects about 66% of the world's population. And some of you who have it may not even know that you have it, right? Because for many of you, it's actually silent. It's just hanging out in your belly. For some of us, it could actually transform from being like a quiet roommate into more serious threat. But here's the thing that really gets me about H. pylori. And the reason where I decided to do this deep dive is because this bacteria not only messes with your belly, it messes with your brain. Okay. And this is something that, you know, I cannot abide by. We have to figure out what to do about this. So today we're going to do a deep dive into what H. pylori is, how it affects your body, how it affects your brain, so that we have to figure out what's going on because it's so common and it's often untreated. So before we dive in, I want to let you guys know how to reach us. As always, we are at The New Method on every platform. If you are looking for our free courses, just go on thenewmethod.com or any of our platforms. There's a link there where we do a deep dive and it's completely free for you. Anyway, wherever you are, make sure you find us at The New Method. And if you are listening and not watching, I'm wearing a blue sweatshirt today. That's all you're missing. So as always, I start with definition. H. pylori stands for H. pylori, however you want to pronounce it. It's short for Helobacter pylori, right? So that H is kind of that first name. It's a tiny spiral shaped bacteria. And as I mentioned, it is super common. 66% of the world's population carries this bacteria, which means that about two out of every three people have it. It damages the stomach lining. It causes gastritis. It causes ulcers. It causes stomach cancer. And if that's not enough to scare you, the latest research shows that it's linked to an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. So this is terrifying. And what's more terrifying is that you might carry this bacteria your entire life and never know it. So many of you listening right now, you go on about your day and you don't even have a clue that you're carrying H. pylori because it's super contagious. So that brings me to the first question, which is how do you get H. pylori? H. pylori is passed from person to person through direct contact with saliva, vomit, or fecal matter. So that means I know we're not walking around touching people's vomit or fecal matter. I hope. But when we talk about saliva, we mean that means sharing utensils, drinking from the same glass, or even kissing, right? Partner to partner, you can potentially spread H. pylori if the bacteria is present. This is why, by the way, usually the whole family will tend to have it. The bacteria can also spread through like food and water if it's been contaminated. So why is it that everyone has this? Well, not everyone, a majority of the people have it. Why is it that some people don't have any issues? Like, how is it silent, right? Because many of us know to go to the GI because we have these symptoms. We have, you know, burping, the bloating. So we're like, hey, let's go check it out. But for many of us, it's completely silent. The bacteria can live in the stomach without any irritation or inflammation. And that, like anything else, depends on the person's overall health, their immune system, the specific strain of the bacteria, because some strains are more intense than others, what's happening in the stomach environment, some genetic factors. So while some people might have like full-blown ulcers from H. pylori, others will be completely non-symptomatic, asymptomatic, and have no idea they have an infection. But either way, whether you have the symptoms or not, H. pylori is still dangerous to your health, even if you don't have symptoms. So you need to find out if you have it. So let's talk about what H. pylori does in the stomach and why it's such a big deal. So remember, you drank your friend's juice box when you were a kid and you wanted to taste their high C. And now along with the high C, you got some H. pylori. And now it's inside of you and it starts to replicate. Once it replicates, it starts to attack the stomach lining. It actually like hooks itself into the stomach lining and it burrows into the mucus layer of the stomach and it clings into the stomach lining. Now, normally this lining is there to protect your stomach from the acids in the stomach, right? But H. pylori now messed with this protective layer. This placement in the stomach lining starts to do a few things. First, it could irritate your belly, right? That's pretty obvious. It causes indigestion, bloating, constantly inflamed, constantly irritated. But you could see also that the bacteria attaching to your stomach lining can also lead to other things besides bloating and discomfort. After a few years of this, your stomach lining starts to lose its ability to protect and it leaves you prone to those ulcers, right? Because that the lining is damaged. You have all this acid floating around and that can give you ulcers. This is why this bacteria is called the ulcer bacteria. Many people who have ulcers have it because of H. pylori. Not all ulcers are from H. pylori, but many are. And that means that if you have ulcers, H. pylori, that the only way to get rid of it, the ulcer, is by curing the H. pylori, eradicating the H. pylori. So we're going to talk about those protocols in a moment. But that's not all it does, right? It's not just irritation and ulcer, right? Because that would be enough, but it's not. 
It also messes with what's called the parietal cells of the stomach. Parietal cells are responsible for making acid. We need the acid to digest food. We need the acid to get nutrients from food. H. pylori actually neutralizes some of that stem, stomach acid. We have less of the acid that we need to break down food and absorb vitamins and minerals. Now, remember, your stomach acids are really important. Sometimes you forget that when it doesn't feel good, but you need stomach acids. They're your first line of defense. It's a shield against other bad guys that you might eat in your food. But now H. pylori mess with that shield. So what does that do? Remember our microbiome, right? If you haven't seen my episode on microbiome, make sure you check it out. But super shortcut, our gut is a home to trillions of bacteria. And normally there's like a good balance, good bacteria and bad bacteria, and things are breaking down and everyone's doing their job and supporting the immune system. But when there's a lower level of stomach acid because of H. pylori, now the pH acidity of the stomach has changed. And once that changed, that means more harmful bacteria can now live there because when it's appropriate, when the acid is just right at the right number, it kills the unwanted bacteria and leaves the good bacteria. But now when that changed, the environment changed, and now you can have more of the unwanted bacteria. So what I'm trying to say is that H. pylori, not only by itself is it a problem, but now it messes with your microbiome, it messes with the whole system. And if you know by now that if you're watching any of my shows, if your microbiome is messed up, your health is a mess. The damage doesn't just end with the burrowing and the lining. It doesn't just end with messing the lining. It doesn't just end with changing the microbiome, like if that's not enough. But we said H. pylori, right, damages the stomach lining itself, which can also lead to ulcers, which could also lead to stomach cancer. But also it can lead to a condition known leaky gut, leaky gut syndrome. And I did a whole episode on leaky gut. So if you're not 100% sure what that is, go check it out. Quick recap is that our stomach has a tight barrier. That barrier controls what gets through into the bloodstream. Leaky gut syndrome is when the lining gets all inflamed and irritated, and now these junctions stay open more often than they should. This allows toxins to get in, other bacteria to get into the system, which in turn will trigger issues like autoimmunity. Okay, so make sure you check that episode out. It's a 20 minutes on its own and explaining the connection between the gut, leaky gut, and autoimmunity, leaky gut in your skin, leaky gut in your brain. So this having H. pylori is another cause of leaky gut. It's not the only cause, but it's another cause. And if that wasn't enough, now that you don't have all this acid to break down, one of the things that's very hard for us to absorb without the stomach acid is B12. So we have pain, we have bloating, we might have ulcers, we might have worse things than ulcers, and we also have nutrient deficiency, all because of this little critter. So this is a really big deal. So you're starting to understand that the risks of ignoring H. pylori is, it's a big deal, right? You don't want to ignore it, right? Because we said bloating and digestion, gastritis, ulcers, and if left untreated over time can cause stomach cancer. And that here's what's crazier. Like, even if you say, I don't care, my stomach doesn't hurt. And even if it does hurt, I don't care. It's fine. It's just some indigestion bloating. I can live with it. This is the part that really, really scares me, and I imagine it would scare you also. And that is that the latest research shows that H. pylori also has an effect on the brain. They have shown a link between H. pylori and Alzheimer's. So if nothing else scared you, this should be a reason to get tested and get treated. And this is because there are several kind of ways that H. pylori does that. On the one hand, it affects the gene. There's a gene called APOE4. It tends to turn on that gene. That gene is associated with Alzheimer's. And it tends to push down a different gene, which protects us from Alzheimer's. It also turns on inflammatory markers, which means now you have neuroinflammation, inflammation in the brain, which can trigger Alzheimer's. So this H. pylori is not, you know, something to be messed with. It's not something to be ignored because it's not just about your belly. It's also about your brain. So something to really consider. So hopefully now I've scared you sufficiently enough to go find out if you have it. So how do you find out if you have it? So as I said, some of you might have symptoms. Heartburn, belching more than usual, and throat clearing. Throat clearing could also be a sign because it's some gastritis is happening. And those signs or symptoms might take you to go to the GI. Even if you go to the GI or even if you don't have symptoms, there is further testing that has to be done. There is some blood testing. It's not the most reliable way to get it. It has certain limitations. I don't want to get into it, but that's not the test I would go with. Next up on the list is stool tests and breath tests. They're definitely more accurate for H. pylori. The stool test looks for antigens that the bacteria make. In the breath test, you drink something 
that the H. pylori is known to break down. And then you breathe into a bag and we look inside that breath, certain markers in that breath after you drink this drink. So these two are better and you can definitely trust positive on these two tests. But sometimes if you have a negative, it might be false. So you might want to test again, or you might want to go with the gold standard, which is a biopsy, a biopsy that's done during endoscopy, right? Endoscopy is when you go to the GI, don't worry, they put you to sleep first, and then they put a tube down your throat with a camera and they take a small tissue sample. That's the biopsy. And then they send it to the lab and test it. That is the best possible way to see if you have it. That's the gold standard. So now we know how to test for it. Next question is, how do you treat it? Usually, if you're positive, you will be offered about two to three weeks of antibiotic treatment along with medications to help reduce your acid until the bacteria is eradicated. There are also some natural agents that have been shown to help eradicate H. pylori. I will go over them in a bit. But whichever road you choose, whether you go with antibiotics only, natural agent supplements, combination of both, the most important thing is that when you're done with treatment, you get tested again to make sure it's gone, right? Don't just assume, hey, I took this like supplemental protocol I heard online and I'm good. Retest, make sure it's gone because the stakes are high, right? Like now you understand the stakes are high, so we don't want to mess around. Now, after the treatment, if you took antibiotics, really important for you to heal your belly after, because remember, antibiotics take the good guys along with the bad guys, right? So you're trying to get H. pylori, but it's also going to take some of the good bacteria with it. So you want to restore your microbiome. You're going to want to take some probiotics and prebiotics. If you take antibiotics, we're going to need some probiotics after. But either way, after the treatment, whether it's antibiotics, whether it's natural or both, you need to do some things for your belly in addition to treatment, right? Number one, you have to strengthen your gut with good nutrition. Food plays a huge role in the state of your gut health, right? The good guys, the good bacteria, they need food to eat. The quality proteins, the rainbow of fruits and vegetables, right? They need the healthy fats. You have to feed the good bacteria so that they can take care of you. And of course, there's also specific foods that are have been shown to help reduce the growth of H. pylori. And this is olive oil. Olive oil has been shown to be effective in reducing the growth of H. pylori. Unsweetened cranberry juice, that have good compounds in your cranberry juice have been shown to prevent the H. pylori from adhering to your stomach lining. Broccoli and broccoli sprouts. Broccoli contains a compound called sulforaphane, and that has been shown to be effective against H. pylori. So whether you take broccoli or broccoli supplements, and I'll talk about supplements in a bit. Turmeric and curcumin, right? They're known for the health properties, but super anti-inflammatory, and we want to be able to protect that gut lining. Green tea. Green tea, it's known to do a lot of really good things, but it also has compounds in there that stop H. pylori from growing. Garlic does the same. And honey, honey is known for its antibacterial properties. And specifically, Manuka honey has been studied to show to suppress the growth of H. pylori. So you could see that it's not just a general conversation of, oh yeah, just eat better. Truly making the decision to eat from this list along with whatever other treatment you're doing, is really going to make a difference in how successful you are in eradicating this thing. Now, there's foods to include, but there's also some foods to avoid, right? Alcohol. Alcohol is just going to delay the healing process. Like there's a lot of things that are not great about alcohol. I can't think of a single thing that is good about alcohol. And when it comes to you trying to heal, comes to you trying to eradicate something, alcohol is not the way to go. Like delay it if you could just wait till the treatment's over because it produces inflammation and it just doesn't help, doesn't help this journey. Same is true for soda, right? The sugar in there, the carbonation, the acidity, the artificial ingredients in there, it's not going to help your cause. And that's true for all the processed packaged foods. Remember, anything you eat, every single thing you eat is going to have an effect. So are you going to give it things that are going to help you win this fight against H. pylori, which you might have had for decades, which is going to take you some time to win? Or are you going to make it harder for this battle to be won by throwing in there all kinds of sugar and processed foods, right? That's how I want you to think about it. Like, how can you help this journey along, even if it's not forever, at least until it's eradicated, just make these choices. Now, this brings me to supplement. Okay, there is an H. pylori protocol that can help. The original protocol was given to me by a colleague from London, but I've tweaked it a bit. And I'm going to share it with you. Now, remember, if you decide to go this route, be sure to test after to be sure it worked. Because if it didn't work, take the antibiotics. Okay, you must get rid of this infection. So let me tell you the things that are in this protocol. I am not affiliated with these companies. I just want to share this with you. So the first thing that you need is something called a biofilm disruptor. Biofilms are shields around bacteria. H. pylori, it's not the only bacteria that has that, but certainly has it. There's a product called Interphase Plus. 
that does this really well. And at the same time that you start on this treatment, you also need things to help strengthen it, right? So we have this thing that's kind of mess with the biofilm, but we also have to strengthen your gut lining. There's a product called GastroMend, and this one really supports gastric health. It has zinc inside of it, mastic gum, DGL, vitamin U, and it's a really nice combination that's going to help with your gut healing. So we have like a biofilm buster, we're getting the lining ready, and now we want to use some products that are known to help eradicate H. pylori. One of them is from Apex Energetics. It's called HPLR. I do sell those on my website. Feel free to check it out. And then also Brocco Max. Brocco from Broccoli, Brocco Max. It's basically a supplement with sulforaphane, which is what the active compound in broccoli, but it's in the pill form. And that's known to have antimicrobial effects, especially around H. pylori. So you have these antimicrobials, right? Natural kind of antibiotics. And then, of course, you're going to add a good probiotics with it with specific strains because there's all kinds of probiotics. But you want a specific strain that's known to fight H. pylori. So the company I use here for this protocol is Microbiome Labs because I do use different probiotics for different things. This is part of the H. pylori road. Two things that you want to drink during this time, there's Matula tea. Matula tea, it's an herbal tea, again, shown to eradicate, and unsweetened cranberry juice, as I mentioned above. Now, I just want to be clear. I am not telling you not to take antibiotics, and I'm not telling you to run to get these supplements. What I'm telling you to do is, first of all, do your own research, but I need you to just know that this is really serious stuff. And no matter what you choose, be sure to eradicate this and to test again after treatment. So just quickly recapping all this, H. pylori is a big deal. It can cause nothing, it can cause stomach discomfort, it can cause gastritis, it can cause ulcers, and it can cause stomach cancer. And now it's been linked to Alzheimer's. So one way or the other, you have to eradicate these guys. Don't mess around, get tested, get treated, and remember, you always knew there was a better way. I'll talk to you guys soon.